Hey, it's Mike. Thanks for tuning back in. As always, let's try to ignore how messy my desk is. I try to all day, every day, so you probably can for seven or eight minutes. I alluded to this on my Sunday card show video, but I bought a big item, as you can see here, and there's something inside too. And I wanted to do a little video on what, what this is and um, what came inside of it, how I got it, and, and how much I paid for it, which I don't usually do a lot of, and what my plan is for it. Usually, uh, I don't like talking about how much I pay for things because it's, it's not important as a, as a collector. It's just not important to me how much I pay for the cards I buy, except that I paid uh, less than they're typically going for. That's, that's a pretty consistent theme for me, uh, is that I get really good deals on things just through patience. Um, this one I couldn't be patient in because it's not a very common item. And it was sitting there in front of me. So I went into the card show and uh, Don's Sports Card Center in Portland, Ron, the owner, uh, always has a table set up at the, at the card show. And I went up to his table and, and I showed you some of the things he had. And he had put, it, put out some things. And he said that he put out things that he thought would be interesting this time. Usually he has a lot of modern cards and some vintage. And this time he, he just thought he'd do something a little bit different and put out some some fun things. And he was telling me that his wife told him, don't sell that, what are you selling that for? And he just thought it would be fun to have something like this out there. So uh, I looked at it and he had it priced at $300. And I looked at it and I was like, man, that is tempting. And I walked around the show again and I come back and he's still got it there. Of course, it's a big ticket item. And uh, I said, ah. and I looked it up and the the, just the Piedmont box is pretty pricey by itself, but the card inside, which he showed me, there's you know there's no secret about what's in the box, can go for fair amount too by itself. So, so he pulled out the bo the the box to show me what was inside. First of all, Piedmont was a um, brand of cigarettes under the American Tobacco Company, and American Tobacco was formed in 1890. Let me see if I can get this thing open. So, 1890, and this had 10 cigarettes in it, this box, and it came probably with a T206 card. Now, they went up to 12 cigarettes, I think, in about 1917, so this is why I know it's pre-1917. But also, under this 10 stamp here, it says, manufactured by, and you can't read it here, but it says the American Tobacco Company. Uh, if it said, manufactured by Liggett and Myers, you would know that it was 1911 or later, because Liggett and Myers branched off as one of um, American Tobacco Company's subsidiaries. So we know that this box came from before 1911, 1910, 1909, and... Uh, and Hey, I am not a T206 expert, and I'm especially not a, uh, a cigarette expert since I've never smoked one in my life. So, please, if you're a T206 expert or know anything about them, let me know where I go wrong with this. But uh, this box is in okay shape. You know, obviously, it's got some wear to it. And here it says... These cigarettes are made of ripe, sweet old tobacco grown in the original, original Piedmont sections of Virginia and North Carolina. And then somebody wrote here. And the Piedmont brand has been around since 1905, or was around since 1905, and they started putting baseball cards in them. The T206s, 1909 through 1911. And of course there are, T206s have 16 different cigarette brands at the American Tobacco Company. So the backs of them, like this one is Piedmont back, the Cigarette of Quality, baseball series, 150 subjects. So you can tell this is in pretty decent shape. And on the front is Danny Murphy throwing. And I thought that this was paper loss right there and then next to the ball here in his hand. 
I thought that was paper loss, but it's actually apparently just clouds. It's it, they all. I looked them up. They all look this way. It's in pretty good shape. It's well centered. Corners are okay. So I thought, you know, what could this? What, what are comps on this card? PSA four. So, so poor condition. Danny Murphy's sell for thirty to fifty dollars, roughly. But PSA four just recently sold for two hundred and twenty-two dollars. So could this be a PSA four? I think so. I think it could be. So could I, after after the grading fee, let's say twenty-five dollars, make two thirds of what I paid for this? And I only paid two eighty. He he did come. $20 down. I paid $280 for the set here of these two things. Could I make $200 net back from this and then have this awesome piece of history? Which would you rather have? Let me know in comments. Would you rather have a single T206 card or the pack, which is rarer, I think, that it came in? I think I would rather have the pack as a piece of history to put in my display. But Danny Murphy... Uh, played for the Philadelphia Americans. He won three World Series championships with the Americans. Uh, Philadelphia Athletics, right? Yeah, sorry. Um, 1910, 11, and 13. So three out of four years. The dynasty. He had a war, a career war of 37, 36. Baseball reference war. Which is like a, a consistent all-star type player. A good, a very good career. Very good player. Uh, he had four seasons in the top ten of war. He um, was a slugger back then. He, he had six seasons in the top ten in slugging. His biggest home run season was seven. He hit 40, I think 44 home runs in his career. But he was a slugger back then before Babe Ruth. That was slugging at that time. Nobody really hit a lot of home runs until Ruth came around. He had a career OPS plus of 124. He's very good. There were no... The All-Star Game wasn't created until, I think, 1933. So he was around before All-Star Games, but he would have been an All-Star in all likelihood multiple times. Uh, four times in the top 10 RBI. Three seasons in the top 10 in batting average. He was a second baseman and right fielder. For, second baseman for the first half or more of his career and then finished out his career as a right fielder. So pretty good. Uh, one of these unopened Piedmont packs sold in 2014 on Robert Edwards auction. Unopened, remember, for $8,888. Now, in this condition, if I were to sell this, I could get, I don't know, one to $200 for it. So I think Ron at Don's had a really good price on this. Uh, not, not, not ridiculous. I mean, I'm not going to profit from it. I don't want to. But I also... Danny Murphy doesn't do anything for me, so I'll probably grade this and sell it and then hang on to this. But I'm really curious what you would do here. And if you think this is... What do you think about? The pack? The card? Let me know. And do you have any T206s? Do you, do you have a big collection of them? That's it. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you guys have a great week.